This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. This is an oil pan for the 397 tunnel port. This is actually a factory Ford C8AX deep sump pan. And it's been modified uh, quite a bit. Um, had another pickup made for this pan that has larger diameter tubing. And um, I'm gonna show you some stuff here in a second. Um, obviously this isn't factory. And I'm gonna take this plate off here in a second and show you what's underneath of it. Um, also got these two drains and we'll talk more about that in a second. But I thought it'd be apropos to talk about, I get a lot of questions from guys, um, you know, what, what oil pan should I run? So um, the, the first thing that you should have in your mind when you pick an oil pan is, is it gonna fit my chassis? Um, you know, pickup trucks, four wheel drive pickup trucks, um, uh, aftermarket front, ends that you know have the the rack and pinion in a in a different spot or have a rack and pinion uh that you need to uh to try to dodge and and all that stuff um so that should be the first thing that you have in your mind and i have a lot of customers who i build engines for that use rack and pinions or a mustang two front front end or whatever and most of those will require a rear sump pan, which is not something that you see too often on a, on a Ford FE. But most of your uh, oil pan manufacturers, such as Canton and Milodon and Moroso, will make a rear sump oil pan for those types of uh, situations. You'll also see that they make uh, some deep sump, uh, front sump pans, as well as some T sump pans and the T-sump pans are for road racing applications or guys that like to corner. Uh, you get that extra oil capacity on uh, on one side or the other. Um, and then you have uh, just a regular passenger car style pan, which would come down to about right here. So first thing you need to do is just make a decision. Uh, well, you need to pick a pan that'll fit your chassis first. And then um, if you're not banking on a factory appearing setup, so if you're building an engine for a Galaxy or a Mustang or something like that, an FE, and uh, you want something that looks like it came out of, you know, 1964 or 1967, then you can reuse the factory oil pan or they even make aftermarket pans uh, with the, the lower sump. My advice um, is to use the deepest pan that you possibly can in whatever application that you have. So if you have, uh, unless it's, you know, something concours and you wanna match exactly what came with the car, um, I would recommend the deepest pan that, that you can find. So the deepest front sump, the deepest T sump, the deepest rear sump. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. And, and the biggest reason is you get oil capacity from that. So the deeper the sump, obviously the higher the capacity, instead of a, a four or five quart pan, you're now looking at a seven quart pan or, or eight or nine. So that's a, that's a very good thing. Um, the more oil that you can uh, hold in the engine, uh, will will ensure that um, you'll always have, you know, a correct amount of oil in the pan, especially with oil pumps such as you know high volume pumps and such such things like that. Um, the other reason, and it's almost just as important, is that the deeper the pan, the further down from your rotating assembly, um, it, the oil is going to be. So. The, the further away from your rotating assembly, the, the less windage that you will have hitting uh, the sump, which is extra horsepower um, in, in certain situations. Um, also reduces the chance of uh, aerating the oil or something like that. Um, lots of guys like to run windage trays with FEs. I do not run windage trays. I have never seen where a windage tray was of any advantage whatsoever. They don't make horsepower on the dyno. 
And um, I have my reasonings for not using them. Uh, some oil pans come with them. So if you buy an Aviade pan, uh, such as like the, the ones that come with the Shelby Cobra replicas, they have kind of an integrated windage tray that they're kind of forced to use. But if I'm given the option, I will not use a windage tray. FEs are skirted block engines. That means that the pan rail is flat. Uh, the crank does not hang down below the skirts of the block. When you add a windage tray to, to, the, to that block, um, you not only impede the return of oil to the pan, but you also make a box um, out of the crankcase, which is not good. Um, you have all kinds of uh, combustion byproducts uh, and crankcase pressure and that sort of thing that's in the crankcase. If you'll notice a lot of your newer engines, such as your LS and your modular Fords and uh, your, your late model Hemis, in between uh, each uh, cylinder, you know, segregation, there will be a, a block bulkhead. And these later model blocks will have these huge holes in the bulkheads. Those bulkheads are for passing combustion gases and pressures back and forth inside the crankcase. If you're really good with those holes, you can shape those holes and guide them and you can actually use those holes to make horsepower. So on some engines that I do, I will drill those holes in the webbing or in the bulkheads of the block and, and put that to, to your advantage. Um, but if you don't have those holes and you close up that crankcase with a, a windage tray, you're kind of impeding um, all of that movement down below the, the pistons and, the, and, and what's going on there below the, below the pistons. So I don't run windage trays. And uh, I've got some good buddies that uh, build a lot of Mopar, uh, you know, uh, super stock motors, pulling truck motors, things like that. And your uh, RB Mopar blocks are skirted blocks just like an FE and um, these guys don't use windage trays either. So my advice, deepest pan that you can use, no windage tray and um, you'll you'll have a, a recipe for success there. So this is my C8 AX pan. I'm gonna pull this tray out of here and uh, I'm gonna do that for a couple of reasons. One is I wanna make sure everything is clean but the second reason is I want to show you what all's going on below this tray right here. All right, we've got our tray removed, and um, you'll see now that we have these trapdoor additions inside the pan. And uh, this is something that I had added. Here's where the factory baffles were in this pan, and um, this will be a lot more effective. Our pickup will set down inside of that and uh, these trays or these trap doors work to keep oil near the pickup which is good in acceleration or deceleration or, or cornering so um, i have these added to uh, a lot of the factory style pans that i do so if you remember uh, jj the 352 uh, the very first iteration of that engine was a factory style pan uh, so it was a, a short sump and I had all these oil control baffles added to that and that is something that you can do to any factory pan. Um, I'll give credit to where credit is due. Th all this work was done by Kevco, K-E-V-K-O in Minnesota. They do a lot of my oil pan work. They are fabulous guys to work with. Um, pretty much anything I ask them to do, they do it and I'll send them stuff like this and say, hey, knock this out for me and, and they'll do it. Uh, they custom make these pickups and uh, just just excellent work so I would highly recommend that you uh, if you have some needs in the future to, to hit those guys up um, let's get to the drains if you remember uh, from last week's video on the cylinder head assembly I had a, a cylinder head drain on each head both of those lines will return to these fittings here. I will add um, some of these uh, pipe to AN fittings. 
and we'll screw those in in the pan after it's painted and, and looks nice. But if you'll notice, the both drains are on one side. And if you're wondering why I did that, it's because of those crankcase movement in, inside. Uh, all this stuff that's below the pistons coming around in the crankcase. Um, if uh, in a lot of situations, if you have one of these drains on the passenger side, the crankshaft is turning clockwise and if you put the drains on this side, it'll almost help uh, that drain movement. If you put one of them on this side, a lot of the times you'll get uh, to the point where this side will not drain uh, because you're pushing uh, air pressure, gas, whatever you want to call it, back up and up your drain line into your cylinder head. So you don't get a good drain that way. So both of your drains should go on the driver's side. Um, if you'll also notice um, the location of, of these drains, I had them put these drains in line with the number two and number three main cap. So you can envision your main cap spacings. If, uh, if you have a drain that's in line with the main cap, that means that you don't have a crank throw or a counterweight that's aimed right at uh, the the area where these drains are coming in. So the the main purpose is to drain the oil back into the pan and let it flow smoothly back to where it needs to be without much violence going on there. So I wanted to, uh, there's a few sharp edges on this that I went ahead and knocked off, but I'll get that installed back in here. And then uh, we're gonna get some paint on this guy. And we have a coat of paint on it. And uh, I've really, since I did those last two small block fours, I've really become a fan of this Duplicolor uh, ceramic engine enamel in low gloss black. Uh, it just has that 60s appearance to it for me. So um, I just, I left the old dings in here just because that's history to me. Uh, there's no telling you know, what kind of stories that oil pan could tell. So it's got a few dings and marks in it, but that's okay. So we're gonna let that paint cure for a while. I'll get my drain fittings installed. And then um, since it's all painted and clean, I will uh, put a couple of bolts in it and affix it to the bottom of the engine and we'll just sit here and wait until our crank gets in. All right, guys, thank you for uh, watching this. I hope uh, maybe that helps you make some decisions on what kind of oil pan you're gonna buy for your engine. Um, go as deep as you can, always, um, and get that windage away from, from the oil, but don't make a box out of your crankcase. That's what it all boils down to. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, got some cool things coming that you don't want to miss out, especially uh, this flat plane 397 tunnel port. Uh, this is going to be an engine with a lot of uh, quirks, I will say. Uh, not only is it a tunnel port 427, but it's a tunnel port 427 that's been destroked to 397, so we're going to have a small displacement. We're gonna have a billet flat tappet camshaft with DLC coated lifters, uh, an enclosed cam tunnel, flat plane crank, aluminum rods. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on any of this stuff. Uh, we've got springs and retainers and locators coming for the FE power heads that we will be assembling on video here shortly. And uh, if everything goes to plan, Stay tuned this weekend for our interview with Jay Brown, the designer of uh, a lot of products for the Ford FE, including the intake adapters and water pump, electric water pump adapters, uh, and these new cylinder heads. That'll be uh, a welcome for, for the FE market. All right, guys, hope you're having a good Wednesday. Take care, and I'll see you soon.